What's up enthusiasts? Yes, it's time. The giveaway results are in. All five winners have been contacted. Responses have been gotten. I think I've got just about every, everybody's address and packages should be going out soon. My apologies. It has taken this long, but I have been... Uh, had my focus taken away to other projects such as getting the 5v5 league going and among other things which we'll be talking about in the future so my apologies this is taking a little bit longer than i would have liked but we're here let's do this i'm excited and of course the 10,000 subscriber giveaway was for five of these fabulous jangular patches and uh there may or may not be some extras coming in the packages of the people that won so first off with the top Comment was Colt Hack. Second place was Tiger Foam. Third place was Beret. Fourth place, this no longer is the upvoted comments, but fourth and fifth place were randomly selected so that people still had a chance even if their comment wasn't one of the top three. So the first of the two random selections was Lewis X Min 2, who we've actually talked about who does quick flag. So that was that was a pleasant surprise and the final fabulous patch is going to Aiden Flynn. So thank you so much to all of you. The number of comments was, uh, it's like over 350, which is, oh, we got a lot to go through. So I wanna say again, thank you so much for everybody, for your support, your participation, your, your, your continued viewership. It means so much to me. And I absolutely love doing this and sharing uh, the fun that I have with Nerf with all of you. So with that said, let's get into the questions. We have a lot. Hopefully I'll get through all of them. Let's find out. Uh, let's go ahead and actually start with Cold Hacks question, which uh, is, if you worked for Nerf, what improvements or design changes would you make to improve the products? And uh, for me, I know a lot of people would say, you know, improve performance, uh, things like that. For me, I don't think I would necessarily improve the performance in terms of FPS or things like that, because they do still have their restrictions, their toy settings they need to, to meet. Um, so what I would do, I would try to tweak things so that they're more modder friendly. Since they can't outright say, hey, modders, here's this thing that you, you know, uh, take it apart and do something great with. They can't say that because of liability and, and, and all the things that go into selling toys. But if they did just make things better for modders internally to have access to cool shells and internals that uh, are more reinforced, things like that, without uh, exponentially increasing the cost, that's the kind of thing I would try and do. That along with making sure there's still fun goofy blasters, which Nerf is currently doing. So uh, that that side is currently fine, but that's, that's what I would change. All right, for, from this point on, we're gonna go actually in the order that these comments were posted. Um, Blasterworks ask, what is your most looked forward to blaster of 2018? Uh, right now, I think it's actually the Prometheus. Not because it's going to function amazingly, not because it's uh, a good value for the amount you pay, just because it's absolutely absurd. It's just this, it looks like a heavy bolter. Uh, when we talked about this in the This Week in Nerf episode, it looks like a heavy bolter. And that's, that's why I'm looking forward to that one. Um, Real quick, actually, I do want to say that because of everything else I'm having to work on right now, this isn't going to be a heavily edited video. I'm not going to be able to put in all of the, the questions, the bubbles, and all of that because I am behind on several projects that need to get done and out. Um, so my apologies for that, but just wanted to let you know why this isn't as edited as I would normally like. And I just I wanted to get, out, get it out to all of you because, I mean, it's been so long. I, I want to share this with all of you. So thank you for your understanding. Uh, next up, Dread Learner. I was wondering, what do you think uh, would have changed in the Nerf community if you if flywheels had never been used? Do you think that full auto would still be mainly air powered? Thanks in advance. This is an interesting one. I think if flywheels hadn't really caught on like they are and become such a, a dominant force in terms of the numbers we see them at games, um, I think we would be pushing for HPA much sooner. HPA is just kind of breaking out now and finding its place and, and uh, getting more and more popular. I think we would have been there years earlier if flywheels had not become a thing. I think we would have been reaching for that full auto, uh, or, or not just a full auto, but semi-auto even settings. And I, I think that HPA would have been the way we went sooner as a mass 
in the community, not just the few people here and there that have been doing it for years. So that's that's where I think uh, we would have ended up if flywheels were not the place to be. Uh, and Asim asks, what got you into your Fabu color scheme as a whole? I like pretty colors. I mean, seriously, though, I, like, I felt I really like like the pastel colors. Uh, also, there's going to be like 10 comments about that rail just falling as I touch that. Uh, <laughs> but I always kind of, I really like the, the soft pastel, really pretty colors like pink and blue and whatnot. So why not paint blasters with that? Pink years ago, three years ago, rarely saw any pink blasters. Seeing more and more now, which is absolutely awesome. But yeah, I just was, why not? Why not? You know, that's, that's kind of... I wanted my blasters to not only function, but look good, too. So that's kind of where it started. Devin uh, Brosnahan asks, What made you want to start a Nerf YouTube channel? Uh, keep up the great work. Here's to another 10,000. Thank you so much, Devin. Um, what made me want to start was there weren't a ton of videos about five years ago. That's weird. It was it for five, four or five years ago, something like that. I decided I want to start making videos occasionally. Really, it started when there weren't many gameplay videos at all. And I brought my camera, my DSLR at the time, to some Burn games. I started season two of Burn and just started filming things and made some kind of montage videos. Like, this is kind of fun. I, I dig this, so let's keep doing it. And then I kind of moved on to more things and... Uh, uh, channels evolved into what it is now, but that's that's what started. It came from gameplay and wanting to share kind of the fun and, and fill a hole that I guess I didn't see much of in the Nerf community in terms of videos. So that was that was kind of where and why that the the channel started. I guess. Uh, well, I guess the channel started years ago when I was cosplaying. This used to be a cosplay channel. I deleted all that and switched over to Nerf. But uh, let's see. Another fabulous question. We talked about that. Another fabulous color question. Uh, be the Triangle DIY asks, what would be the most you spend on a modded blaster? Ooh. That's a good question. I, I mean, I could easily see spending hundreds of dollars if I wanted to make my masterpiece blaster. I would be okay with hundreds of dollars. Um, again, as I just mentioned, I, I come from the cosplay community and things are not cheap there. Uh, I also come from playing Magic the Gathering. It's not a cheap hobby. So to me, hobbies are something that once you find the thing you love, it's okay to invest in it as long as it will have a longevity to it and bring you that joy. So if I found a build that was just like my build that I wanted to have for a long time and, and stick with, I'd be okay just hundreds of dollars totally okay with that. It would be an investment in the hobby for me and my enjoyment of it. Um, I think we need to get away from the idea that Nerf has to be cheap. Uh, not that that's a pervasive feeling at the moment, but it is certainly a sentiment that has been held in the past that Nerf, you know, if something is expensive in Nerf, why? Nerf should be cheap. No. Nerf can be cheap, but it can also be expensive. And that allows both sides of the hobby to exist both the entry level or the affordable stuff that can still perform well and the super high-end niche stuff that may not perform far better than the other stuff, but is exactly what you want. Uh, so that's, that's my personal viewpoint there. Okay, I keep losing tracks. I keep putting the phone down. Uh, when did you start painting your blasters with the Fabo color scheme? Uh, Donald Skelton asked that. And let me see, do I have it here still? right here this is the beginning blaster of the fabu color scheme and then after that i painted this strife to match these are both hand painted um so they're both not great the beginning i hand painted them because i actually used to work for games workshop and i like hand painting miniatures and whatnot so that i want to do it for blasters but i rushed these i did not take the time i should have to do these though they still exist but that is uh this little fire strike was the first the beginning the blue and i was like what if i did pink accents on it i really like pink and there's not enough pink and that so i did some pink accents and thus began i was like let's do more pink on the strife 
And then let's do the Fabu Strike, which is like predominantly pink. I mean, it's a little out of frame, but yeah, that's where it started, was that little Fire Strike. Uh, Finn plays, what's your dream job? This, essentially, one of. I mean, I think everyone has a few that they would like to do. Uh, being able to create content, nerfing, and making a living doing it is, is a dream job. Um, I'm not there yet. We're working on it, but it is, it is a goal. Um, cause being able to just share something you love doing and, and enjoy doing as a job is a dream job. Uh, so yeah, that is one of them. I have a couple others that, you know, uh, I pursued in the past, but yeah, that's, that's, that's the one that makes the most sense right now. I'll put it that way. <sighs> Let's see what else we got. What is your favorite blaster to mod? Ethan Fredrickson asks. Um, fair blaster mod. So I'm I'm not a heavy modder. Uh, most people, you know, I pay for kits. And when I've only recently, in the last few months, started really doing mods and, and soldering and why, you know, learning that stuff. So for me, I haven't really modded enough stuff to have a favorite platform to mod. I have a favorite platform to use, and that's like many people, the strife. It's just, it's just so easy and compact and, and solid. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's where I'm at currently. Favorite awful blaster, Alexander asks. <sighs> Favorite awful blaster. Do I have an awful blaster up here? No. Hmm. It might be the Tech 3. After being able to get tags with it when uh, Walcom challenged me to use it in a game, uh, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. So yeah, we'll go with the Tech 3 for right now. Uh, RJ asks, what top three vintage or rare blasters would you like to add to your collection? Uh, emphasis on add, so it can't be a blaster you already have. Hmm, vintage. Um, I used to have a Defender that I no longer have. I want one of those again, because I loved, I loved that as a kid. Also love the Supermax 5000, have one of those a kid, don't have it anymore. So those are two. Um, I've owned Manta Rays, I've owned Crossbows, I've owned Red Strike Long Shots. Uh, what do I not have that I really would like? <sighs> That's a tough one. A third, I can't think of a third off the top of my head, but there's, there's two for you. Um, I, would, I would like a nice, fully functioning, solid... Manta. We'll say that because the Manta I have is cracked and yeah. Uh, Drew Benson asks, how do you do that Fabu hair? Um, I honestly couldn't tell you. I have, I have like kind of fluffy hair, so it kind of stays up on its own. Like I don't use any product, but that also means when it grows out too long, it gets wild and unkempt kind of as you've seen it over the past few months. Cause I didn't get a haircut early enough. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I, Despite my thinning hair, it does it does it does cooperate a fair amount in terms of staying up. So now I just gotta color it. Uh, what motors are the best for a strife mod? Justin Mayer asks, and that's very very subjective. I cannot give you a definite answer on that. That depends heavily on what you want to do and accomplish with that build. Zachary Creekmore asks, if you could add anything to the nerfing hobby, what would it be? Uh, it would probably be what we're trying to add right now, and that would be a competitive team sports element. An actual national league that we are working on right now, which hopefully the website and the official everything will be up in the next week or two. Fingers crossed. But yeah, that's what I would add, and that's what we're trying to add right now, is a team sports element. Because I'm a competitive person, I love competing, and that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. FP Nerf asks, do you use real firearms or airsoft guns as well as Nerf or just Nerf? Uh, so I have a full airsoft loadout. I bought it because there was supposed to be a outdoors field, airsoft field opening up in my city. After I bought everything, they decided, no, we're not going to. So that's a kind of a bummer. I've got several airsoft like indoor fields or CQB fields within like an hour and a half of me. First off, CQB doesn't really interest me. For Airsoft, it's just not my vibe. Um, second off, I don't really want to drive an hour and a half for Airsoft. At least right now. So yeah, I still have yet to actually play, but I have a full loadout. 
So yeah, not opposed to it. Just would have liked an, uh, an outdoors field here. Uh, w Snail asks, what is, the, what is your first mod? The first mod I did, uh, the first mod I did was opening up a recon and removing the air restrictor. That's the first mod I did. And that was right when I got back into the hobby or into the hobby, I should say, period. So yeah, that's the first thing I did. Uh, kind of a follow up on that, Nerfinate asks, what inspired you to start Nerf? I mean, what was the push that got you there? Um, or are there not, or I read that wrong, but what was the push that got you into Nerf essentially? Um, friends. I, I mean, a couple of friends picked up some Nerf blasters for fun. And then we were like, hey, let's have a game. So we started kind of having our own game and, and uh, you know, like 10, eight to 10 people, something like that. Uh, and then some of them lost interest. But I happened to search online and found the Burn games and the HVZ games here and went out and just met the amazing community here in the Bay Area. And it's exploded since then. And that, that was the push for me to really get invested in the hobby. So that's what really got me heavily into it is the community here. Uh, gave me the idea to start Twin. Spicy Leprechaun 29 asks, uh, the idea to start Twin actually came from the channel Airsoftology. Uh, I enjoy watching Airsoft videos and, uh, and paintball videos and stuff like that. So I follow a number of those channels. One of those channels is Airsoftology. It has a weekly kind of, it's not a news segment, but he talks, he answers questions and talks about Airsoft. And I was like, what if we did something similar to that for Nerf, but instead of taking questions, we just talked about the news and kept people informed, people that may not have the time to be on Reddit constantly. And that's kind of what bred uh, Twin. Salty Boy asks, what is your favorite Nerf ammo type? Right now, probably AccuFakes. They just perform so well. AccuFakes and Worker Short Darts. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's where I'm at right now. Uh, Ruben Sivajodi asks, I'm sorry if I butcher any of these names. My apologies in advance. Uh, what is the most fun blaster and or wars you have been to? Do you have any plans to come to the UK and play here? I would love to come and play in the UK, whether it's at a Green, green Cloaks event, um, a uh, like a Terminal Infection or Foam, Foam Dart Thunder event, or even, um, uh, what's the new Foam Fleeing Skirmish, I think it's called, the High Powered event. And I would love to come to the UK and fling some foam, basically is what I'm saying. Uh, the most fun blaster wars, most fun blaster, that's a tough one because I really, I, I switch all the time because things just are fun. Uh, the most fun wars, probably burn events until we get the 5v5 completely up and running and I get to play in those. Uh, but yeah, the burn events are, uh, have been historically the most fun for me because they are a little bit more competitive and I'm, as I've said, a very competitive person. Get a Mods asked, is there a blaster you like nothing about? If not, what blaster comes the closest to that in your opinion? Ooh, ooh. Off the top of my head, I don't know why I keep looking behind me like I'm going to put a blaster I hate everything about on the wall behind me. Um, I don't know that there is. There, I mean, there probably is, but I probably forgot about it because I don't like it. Like, I don't, like, vehemently hate things. I just kind of get indifferent or dislike or you know it's just like oh this is not for me and i'll move on um yeah see i don't i don't have one that i like outright hate like disgust or anything uh maester sin asks why do you nerf i'm actually gonna do a video on that uh following up on walcom's video he did a while and mr nathan followed that up uh, i have an idea for how i want to do it it's gonna be a little bit more involved so i need some time to get it done but it's something i want to do and plan on doing uh, let's see, Travis Shea asks, what do you think is the future of automatic springers, not just in future nerf, but the hobby in general? Automatic springers are kind of an awkward situation because to get 
any amount of power that really would rival things like flywheels at a rate of fire, you're putting immense amount of, of power into something to prime a heavy spring. Uh, but if someone can get it done, I know Blaster, um, I know Blaster Forge Phil has been working on some stuff, but it needs to have a good rate of fire to really, to really shake the market, I think. And that's, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I'm not, I, I'm not heavily invested into it as a viable platform yet. I'm curious, but not, you know, we'll see. Uh, Squid Nerf asks, what inspired you to start nerfing M more specifically modding? Inspired you the most to start making videos? And why did you start? Um, we talked about this a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I watched, I mean, there were, there were so few people making videos at the time that I enjoyed. You know, I, I watched a lot of uh, Bubalolo. Uh, actually, it's probably the one that really got me invested into the hobby in terms of like watching the hobby side. I went back and watched his entire catalog, actually. I remember um, when I first got into the hobby. Um, who else? But yeah, I just remember seeing there wasn't much and a lot of the stuff that was being filmed wasn't the greatest quality in terms of video and audio. So one of my goals as a channel was to raise that quality up. And the quality has come up in the community a lot in the last five years, a lot, a lot. That wasn't because of me, I'm not saying it's because of me, I'm just saying in general, people, more talented people have come into the hobby in the last, you know, five years. You've got, you know, Make Test Battle does amazing stuff. Out of Darts does amazing stuff. Um, Thunderdome documentary, you know, he does amazing stuff uh, in terms of video quality and whatnot. So that was really one of my, uh, my factors. And, and what's funny is I look back at my old stuff and it's like, it really wasn't that good quality. So, uh, I didn't really succeed in my end, but that was my goal. It's getting better now, at least. Uh, so yeah, let's see. Uh, Recycle Hero asks, do you think that community-made blasters and parts will soon take, start to take over the hobby in a capacity where it's giving other mainstream corporate brands a run for their money? Uh, no. I think it's great where we're going with community parts, and I think they will become a mainstay in the community, but the community is not so big that we will rival a company like Hasbro. Uh, it's just not there. Maybe a decade from now, depending on how things go, we'll make a dent in that. But currently, no. Um, it, it will take a large uh, influx of players for that to be the case. And uh, that'd be great if it happens, but it's not currently, it's not currently a soon thing. Um, but yeah, we will see in terms of the hobby side, will become very, very heavily uh, third party made, I think is where we're headed. I think that's great. I think it's awesome we won't be reliant upon Hasbro or other major companies for our offering. So that's, that's where I'm at for that. Uh, Michael Hetty asks, Weddle, I think is how you say it, hopefully. What are some modding goals for 2018? Master key, integration, overhaul, etc. Learning the basics. By the end of 2018, if I can handle all the basics and understand all of the way, ways that the things function in terms of being able to open something up and go, this is this and all these parts function here so I can do this to this blaster when I open up a new blaster, basically, um, and not need to wait for someone else to do a guide on it. That's my goal for 2018 is to understand the basics of how things function. Joe H., uh, what old school blaster would you like to see revamped for the elite line? Hmm. I really should have. See, I wanted to give you all a fresh and, and right off the bat responses to these. Some of these I should have read and thought about before doing this because I'm like, oh, let me think about that. Let me just take some time here. <sighs> what would be good? Oh, my favorite blaster of all time. The secret shot is so good. It's so bad. Um, yeah, no, I would love to see the secret shot be revamped. That would be that would be a great. Uh, Cat guy does nerf ass. Jangular, why is your name Jangular? That is because 
My handle basically is a misspelling of one of my favorite characters from a book I was reading when I was a teenager. The book is called Marl Fox, and the character's name was Jangler Swift Eye. J-A-N-G-L-U-R. And I misspelled it. Uh, J-A-N-G-U-L-A-R, or misremembered it, rather. I was thinking of, you know, what I wanted to name myself in a game online, I think. I can't remember what game. Might have been Counter-Strike. Probably Counter-Strike. Uh, but yeah, that's that's where it came. It just stuck. It was great because not many people use that name. So yeah, it was great and it, it I like it. So yeah, that's where it came from. Uh, Jason Ware asks, what do you think of all the advances in the Nerf hobby recently from all the new flywheel tech to hobby made blasters? And we're going to see the hobby in 10 to 15 years. Um, you think we'll phase out store-bought nerf and use primarily hobby-grade blasters. Like I just said, I think we'll definitely see a shift in the hobby towards hobby-made blasters, you know, community-made blasters and whatnot. We'll still for sure see strifes running around and, and Hasbro shells, but they'll be just that. People will like the way a shell looks, so they'll run that instead of something else, and that's great. Options. I love options. I love seeing variety on the field. That's where we're headed, I think. Hawkeye007 asks, are you going to end war 2018? Will you be doing a booth? If so, hopefully. I can't guarantee anything. Hopefully. Travel for me is, is uh, an interesting thing with my health issues. So I'm actually planning on uh, trying to take a short plane trip somewhere, come back, see how I handle it. Then hopefully I can handle, you know, a five-day trip to end war or something like that. So... Fingers crossed I'll be there. I really want to be there to, to, to meet everybody in person and have a good time and hang out and, you know, do a twin episode live maybe, something like that. So that's, fingers crossed. Adam Center asks, have you ever met someone in a Nerf War using a loadout inspired by one of your videos? No, not yet. That'd be pretty awesome though. That'd be pretty awesome. Um, Robert Merrill asks, if you could make a, a line of Nerf blasters for Nerf, what would it be like? That's tough. Because I like goofy fun, but I also like functioning. So, like, I don't really know how much more functional you get than a Strife in terms of cost-effective production. So I'd probably go for something goofy, thinking about it. Just something fun, ridiculous. Yeah. Armod74 asks... How do you find motivation to keep posting quality content? Well, thank you for saying it's quality. Sometimes, uh, I don't know. Uh, I know you spoke about your channel hitting a plateau. I know myself, as well as many others in the hobby, have experienced something similar. So any insight on how uh, you... I have to click to see more. Uh, on how you went about working through that would be very interesting. Um, yeah, hitting roadblocks is a very real thing in, in YouTube in general. Uh, you hit a plateau, it's all about rising and, and plateauing and then pushing past it. It's just persistence. Um, I burnt out for a short period and I needed to slow things down and, and kind of step away. And I streamed for a few months and, and had some fun with that. And I regret uh, that I've stopped streaming because I did almost, I got close to getting partnered on Twitch doing that. But um, yeah, it's one of those things where it can be very, demotivating and it's just finding that joy getting back to what brings you joy about what you're doing apologies for the cut my camera just overheated so i had to let it cool off for a little bit uh hopefully we can get through the rest of this before it happens again so let's just jump right back into it uh tiger foam asks in all your years of nerfy goodness what would you say is your all-time favorite moment Ooh. um i suppose you could look at it from a few different ways uh, one of my favorite moments was the first time we tested uh, the 5v5 rule set a few years back and teams showed up with color coordinated outfits and jerseys and that to me was just, it was like seeing the beginning of something great. Uh, just, just where we could potentially take this hobby and the sport side of things. So that to me was one of my absolute favorite moments. There have been some favorite moments in terms of um, just fun games, a couple of them being uh, hitting a tag through a plant and having that tag be caught on a GoPro uh, as the dart zoomed through the leaves and tagged uh, Josh a bit area nerf. So that was cool to see from both angles. Uh, favorite HVZ moment would be 
and SFSU was running double melee because if you have the chance to run melee at a nerf at a HVZ game, do it. It's broken. It's just it's just dirty. It's just cheating essentially is how good it is. Uh, and you know, so I, I'm running two two like 36 inch swords and. I'm in the safe zone for the end of the mission, but there's a whole bunch of people being chased by zombie players to try and make it in time. So I run out to go help them, and I'm I'm all gung ho, and I, I you know tag a couple to clear a path, and I'm I'm walking backwards uh, so I can see the people in front of me. I hear someone from the safe zone yell, "Jerry, behind you!" And like without even thinking, I just swing back behind and tag the person with the uh, with the swords, not even looking. And it was just, it was one of those moments just like, yes, nailed it. But that that's just some of my, some of my memorable moments, I guess we can put it. Um, let's see. What is the worst nerf-related injury you've had or seen? Ben Lamb asks. Ooh, I don't like thinking about these. Um, was at a game at a park in San Francisco where someone stepped off of some of the dirt at like a weird angle is like down a steep like a, a kind of a steeper patch of dirt and they like rolled or messed up their ankle and they ended up I think going to the hospital I, I never found out what happened to them, but hopefully they were okay I really like I was worried and concerned because they don't want anyone to get injured so stay safe when you're playing nerf seriously like it's not worth getting hurt over uh let's see let's see Josh France asks, what advice would you give to any up and coming clubs wanting to branch out into larger events like having multiple groups crossing state lines to play? Consistency in advertising. Get your name out there, get your brand out there, spread the word as much as you can to get more people coming. Um, and yeah, just consistently have the games. So people will know that you are there and you are going to keep running games. Even if they miss one, there will still be games. And uh, that way it keeps your numbers up as well and you can uh, have more people so people have fun when they do show up and see that it's growing and th th those kinds of things There are people uh, that are much better at discussing how to grow games than I am uh, I am seeing some similar questions and things like that. So I am going to um, Skip over the ones that are kind of along the same lines of the ones that I have already answered Just so we can hopefully get through all this again before my camera overheats a second time uh, Mystic Chicken 11 asks, do you think it's possible to attach two HR vacuums to a proton pack leading to a here mini? Why not just have two here minis with, why not just have a double, double arm proton pack? Like two hoses, you can just like, you can split your fire like, uh, oh, I'm thinking where I'm a 40k now, Marnius Calgar with a double storm, oh yeah, that'd be awesome. That's what I'm thinking. Um... <clears throat> Nosecrapper Joe asks, a uh, few questions. Would you call yourself a Nerf celebrity? No. No. Uh, have you ever considered leaving or taking a break from Nerf? What made you stop doing it? Um, I definitely have eased off of Nerf for certain periods. Uh, sometimes you just you burn out on things if you focus too heavily and you stop having fun. So, just, yeah, take a break. Uh, would you consider the meta of Nerf? That very much depends. Uh, it depends on what game you're playing, what the rules are what the field is like, it really depends on a lot of different factors. But you're pretty much always going to see Strifes, and you're always going to see some form of high-powered Springer, like a Caliber and Longshot. It's just uh, it's just where things are at. Do I still play Duel Links? Not really. Um, I'll get back to it at some point, I'm sure, but I, I haven't. I've been so focused on getting things moving here. Uh, Patrick Ross, what is your favorite game type to play at a nerf event? Capture the flag? Capture the flag or any competitive setting, essentially, put it that way. Depresso Espresso Gaming asks, what do you play in your speaker? Also, do you have any YouTubers that you would like to collab with that you haven't, uh, or do you have special interests that we don't know about? Uh, let's see, there's a few parts to this. Do I play my speakers? I'm guessing what music I listen to? Is that, I think maybe that's the question? Um, a lot of different stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I pretty much open-minded about music for the most part. Uh, yeah, good music is good music. Uh, how many YouTubers I would love to like to collaborate with? Yeah. 
a lot of them. It'd be easier to list the YouTubers I don't want to collab with than the ones I do. Just, yeah, there's a lot of people I'd love to collab with. Uh, Gabriel Jones asks, how are your stomach problems? Uh, also, what do you think of the state of the community? Stomach problems are uh, not as bad as they were. Not as bad as they were, but now I have some lingering issues and things that I'm working on getting uh, situated, hopefully better healed. I would like to be healthy again, you know, fully healthy. It'd be fantastic. I've honestly kind of forgotten what that feeling is like. So, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, state of the community. Not a bad spot. I want to see us keep growing. Keep keep bettering ourselves. Keep bringing more people in. That's, that's what I want to see. Uh, E3R4Pain asks, Hey, Jangular, what is your favorite mod by a fan friend or fellow YouTuber slash modder? Oh, dang. I don't think I can answer that. I don't think I can answer that because there are so many ridiculously good mods. Um, yeah. I'm kind of loving like uh, Exiled's current Nemesis builds, the mini Nemesis builds. Those are awesome. Uh, Mr. Nathan's Hellhound is one of the greatest pieces of work that's ever been done. Um, yeah, there's, there's too many. I, I'm really bad about favorites. Let me put it this way. All these favorite questions. I'm really bad about having favorites because I look, I like to look at things from as many angles as I can. So there's always more options. So that's, yeah, that's, that's for me. It's kind of just like, <sighs> I have a hard time picking favorites. Uh, it's seen, children asks, it seems like there's an arms race going on between humans, blaster technology, and zombies, special rules in HVZ. Do you see a practical limit or end game to this? Starts and blasters reaching limits of tech safety or just too many special rules for zombies? Who do you think will win? Uh, personally, I, I always see people talking about how X blaster is going to break HVZ and it, it never happens. It never, zombies are always going to be more powerful and they don't need a ton of special rules to do so. I think people just get caught up in the fun of making special rules, but I don't think they're as necessary as some people may feel. That said, I just always think outside of things like, I don't know, if you have something that's accurate with a high rate of fire over 100 feet away and no zombie can actually get close and everybody has one of those, maybe... But even still, there's still corners you have to check. There's still bushes. There's still all kinds of things zombie players, good zombie players can take advantage of. So I'm not, not in one of those camps that blasters break HVZ games. Uh, at least not yet. In terms of balance, I, I almost kept rambling. We'll move on. Uh, what is your favorite collected vintage or not nerf blaster and why? Arathi ZS. Again, favorite blaster of all time. Secret shot. This one's been painted to match the red rapid strike I have, which is currently with Novacon. Uh, we'll hopefully have that back in hand at some point in the future here. Uh, Cup of Joe Nerf asks, do you have any tips for beginning modders? Just have fun. Just have fun. Do stuff you want to do. Don't be afraid to fail. You're going to fail. You're going to mess something up. It's going to happen. It's how you learn, though. Uh, taking those moments and being able to tuck that away as knowledge, that's going to help you in the future. Uh, I'm starting to see more and more questions that we've already answered, so I was taking a little bit to scroll past and see uh, what we are, or, or see questions we haven't, sim that aren't similar we haven't answered yet. Um, Executioner asks, how often do you do Nerf Wars and will you post more footage this year? There are Nerf games happening almost every weekend in the Bay Area. I don't make it out to all of them, unfortunately. I really want to. Um, but yes, more game footage will be coming this year. It is a goal for this year. So look forward to that. <sighs> Nate Sargent asks, did you Nerf as a kid growing up? Uh, and if so, do you remember your first blaster? I did have Nerf blasters as, as a kid. I distinctly remember running around uh, my best friend's house as a kid. And him having a manta ray. And I can't remember what I had, but I remember like, the manta ray is so cool. Um, I don't remember what my first blaster is, or was. The first two blasters I remember owning, first three, I guess you could say, are the Secret Shot, the Supermax 5000, and the Defender T3. Those are the three that I distinctly remember uh, as a kid. 
Uprising Shadow Dragon asks, have you ever thought of doing an integration with more than three blasters? Uh, yes, but I'm not really an integration. I don't have that expertise or knowledge yet, so maybe somewhere down the line in the future. Uh, do you think Gravity Ghetto Mods asks, do you think with modular detachable brass breaches becoming more common, will big bad bows become popular again? Ooh, that I could not say. It's They're still very much hampered by their single shot capabilities and needing to reload after them. Um, that's my feeling. They're kind of getting pushed out by things like, like Caliburns and other high-end mag-fed options. Ben Farley have you ever played the best video game in existence at Nerf and Strike for a Wii? I have not. I am a sham. I have not played it. Oh. Uh, 3D Works asks, Jenga, what was your favorite loadout for your burn games and your 5v5s? 5v5s loadouts, uh, I've talked about it before. There's a video on the channel. I have a new favorite loadout, but yeah, that is definitely, it's lightweight, it's low profile. Oh, it's so good. Uh, fabulous theme, lots of questions about fabulous theme and what blasters are like using and stuff that we've talked about. Um, okay, here's Timothy Black will ask, uh, why did you start nerfing and why did you not do speedball or airsoft? Uh, so yeah, this is this kind of a different branch of something we've, we've talked about here in the past. I'm not opposed to trying airsoft uh, and speedball. I actually, I love watching competitive paintball absolutely love it. It's really fun and it's something I could see myself doing potentially. That said, the idea of coming home just covered in welts, it's not the most appealing to me. It's, it's, I also have a very low threshold for pain. That said, if I had fun doing it, it'd be, it would be worth it. But if it's, it's that, you know, is it really worth it? Um, so I don't know. I, I'm actually thinking about giving paintball a try since we have paintball here and, and having some fun with that and giving it a go because I do love the team aspect of paintball. That said, my focus right now is on pushing the team aspect and the competitive 5v5s of nerf, so I may not have time uh, to pick up another hobby. So I've kind of like, it's kind of like I've invested into this and this is where my time and energy goes. So I haven't really explored airsoft and paintball as much as I may have liked to do so in the past. So uh, this is kind of the path I chose. That said, I do want to get out some paintball fields and airsoft fields and just have some fun. Um, so yeah, that's something for the future to go do. Uh, Austin Nava asks, my question is one you probably get a lot, but I would like to know what cosplays did I do and which one was my favorite? favorite Ooh, looking up at all the cosplay wigs over here and wigs over there um favorite i love doing vocaloids um because i like music and music and cosplay put it together awesome i loved doing yuri from tales of vesperia one of my favorite games what else did i enjoy doing what other cosplays did i have fun with those, those are the ones, the big ones that pop into mind that I had really, I had a lot of fun with. I mean, I've done Cloud. I did uh, Ichigo from Bleach. Or did I do? No, I, I had the costume. I didn't do it. I did Shinsui from Bleach. I did a lot. I could, I could do a whole video on it. I did a lot. All right. Um, Money Cat asks, what happens to your Overwatch videos? I'm not the biggest fan of the game, but I am very curious. I stopped doing gameplay videos in this channel, or video game videos, because... Uh, while I have a lot of fun doing them, the channel is focused on Nerf. Um, and I, I realized I should keep the focus to one thing, so we stuck with Nerf. Uh, and we stopped doing the game video game videos. Uh, Kyle Kimbrough asks, what's the most inspirational story you've heard from the Nerf community? The Thunderdome documentary was an awesome one, and it actually had several others inside of it, and I think that's a, a must-watch for anyone. Coat Doug asks, what exactly makes you and your blasters so fabulous and what inspired it? 
Uh, my blasts are fabulous. I don't know about me. But um, I just like pretty things. It's just that simple. I just like pretty things. Delta Wolf asks, how do you keep motivated for YouTube and how do you deal with equipment failure and not having great quality gear? I have a Nerf YouTube channel separate to this account, but it's fallen by the wayside um, due to camera and, and not having things like that. So make use of what you have. You, you don't need all the latest and greatest. It helps. And for some things like gameplay, it can really help. But doing videos, talking about things, make sure things are well lit. Um, you can use your phone even if you have a well-lit space to talk about things. So just make the best of what you have. I highly recommend looking at channels that talk about how to vlog and do videos and stuff like that. They have a lot of good tips and tricks. Um, what else have we not talked about here? John Smith asks, when you look at the future of your channel, what impact do you hope to have on the industry and community surrounding sport and hobby? That's a good question. Um, I just want to spread the, the positive, fun, community aspects of this hobby and, and promote it as a sport as well as a hobby. Uh, that, is, that is kind of my goal, to bring people news and information, bring them entertainment, and show the fun of this hobby, even if it is, you know, it does have a little bit of a stigma right now because it is in, it, in its infancy and seen as just a bunch of children's toys and people don't always catch on that these children's toys uh, have been modified to perform absolutely phenomenally. So that's, that's kind of where, where I'm at with what I want to do. What else we got? Mm -mm. People ask about End War. Again, fingers crossed we'll make it to End War. Uh, Drive That says, say you live in a universe where Nerf Blasters didn't exist, what would you be doing besides for fun? Probably cosplaying, playing video games, and uh, making movies. Probably, or taking photos. But essentially the stuff I do right now, just not nerfing. I may, I may push harder for getting into Airsoft or Paintball if there was no nerf. But yeah, otherwise that's probably, I probably do a lot of the similar stuff I do outside of Nerf. It's a very interesting question though, I, I dig that question. Uh, here the South Town asks, do you feel that Malie has a place in modern Superstock, Ultrastock, Nerf battles? Um, to me, I feel that Melee and Shields and all that are a bit strong. So yeah, they definitely, if they have a place there and you know how to use them properly, you can make a big impact. That's my feeling on them. Uh, they aren't included in the 5v5 rules because they can also add a little bit of um, confusion when someone has to say, oh, this hit there, not here. Or, I want things to be as clear and concise as possible for people and not convoluted. So that's why they aren't included. Uh, I think we're almost... We're almost finished. Seeing a lot of a lot of similar questions. Faceplace asks, Jangular, where do you want to improve most, both in everyday life and in nerf-related topics? Uh, being positive. It, it can be hard to be positive, but just uh, continuing to motivate myself and push forward and be better and do better. Um, and, and hopefully through that, spread that to other people and motivate other people and just, yeah, do as much good as I can. That's really, I, I would love to be able to do that. Um, Lone Assassin asks, if you could only use one blast for the rest of your life, what would it be out of JSPB Bro, JSPB Pro, FDL, or a Caliburn? I have not, while well, I've held a, a, an FDL 2, I have not used one in a game. So currently I would have to say, a caliburn because i could swap out the power level as i please and it's accurate and uh maybe when i actually get my hands on an fdl2 i would be i may change my mind but that's where i stand currently um Irish Josh Plays asked, my question is, was there a particular nerfer or nerf mod on YouTube that inspired you to create awesome builds and later make a channel? Uh, like I said earlier, I watched a lot of Bobo Lolo. That, uh, I really, really enjoyed his videos early on. 
Uh, and there were definitely people, other people that I watched, like Basic Nerf was one of the people that had gameplay videos. Uh, so yeah, that, that's uh, it's a bummer. Basic Nerf isn't around anymore. It doesn't post videos, which is it's a bummer. Maybe it'll come back. I think we're... Pokemaster asks, what is your life story? I don't think we have time for that one here. My apologies. Uh, already SS, do you have any special plans for End War 2018? Any specific s or special loadout? I just want to make it there. We'll, we'll figure out a loadout later. I just want to make sure I can make it there. Aiden Flynn, who is one of our winners, asks, do you have any tips for creating a local nerd community and organizing wars? Uh, like I mentioned earlier, just get the word out. Invite as many people as you can. Get your friends. Just have loner blasters. Start with something small. Burn started in a, at a barbecue, a backyard barbecue, I think, where Josh and Sean brought some blasters and their friends just had some fun and they started hosting games and it grew into something that, that just, in my mind, sparked the growth of the Bay Area community here to make it as huge as, as it is. So just, just start. Just get out there and do it. Have fun. Reginald Paris asks, do you think or feel like Hasbro running out of unique ideas for blasters? Not terribly. Like, I don't expect them to have five unique, creative, blow-my-mind-away blasters every year. I think if they have one game-changer or one new kind of thing or idea each year, then that's something. All right, so that was the second time the camera's cut out because it's been running too long. Uh, so we're, we're going to finish up this question really quick. And then I think we're gonna have to call it. So uh, basically, my thoughts: it has what doesn't need to reinvent the wheel six times over every year uh, for me to be happy. Give us some solid shells, some cool-looking stuff, some fun, goofy stuff, and maybe one, maybe two blasters that do something new and creative, and I'm pretty happy. Um, I think that's what community's for: is to find new and fun and crazy things to do. Uh, but that's just me. I don't feel they need to do, you know, go over the moon several times every year but that's just my opinion uh that said i'm so sorry so so sorry i'm not able to get to every single question um i thought we were close to done i think we were maybe a third of the way done when i started scrolling through the questions so i'm so sorry everybody thank you so much for your amazing responses and 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 uh the amount of people that responded congratulations to the winners i will uh Aim to get these out. Hopefully soon I need to get packing material, boxes, stuff like that. Um, and make sure I finish the time-sensitive stuff I have first, and then I will focus on getting these out to you. Thank you so much for all of your participation. Uh, if your question didn't get answered, uh, I don't think I'll do a second Q&A portion of this, but if you really, really all want it, and there's like a ton of outpour for it in the comments, which I don't expect there to be, uh, because one of these is enough, um, maybe I'd do it. But... I think the easier way to do it is if your question didn't get answered and you really, really want it answered, uh, pop into the Discord channel. The link is down below. Ask me the question in Discord and I will get back to you. So my sincerest apologies for those questions that I didn't get to answer. I feel terrible about it, but I don't want to make you sit through a three hour plus video of me answering questions. And yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. But this is a lot even. So thank you so much, all of you that stuck through this and watched all the way through. I honestly appreciate every single one of you. It is amazing that there are over 10,000 of you that chose to, to subscribe to this channel and said, yeah, yeah, I dig this. So that's, uh, that's pretty awesome. And I hope we can continue to grow and make amazing things as a community together here and just see the future of this hobby as we grow and grow and grow and do so together. So thank you so much, every single one of you for being here, for watching this, for supporting the channel and being a part of the community. With that said, as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.